Greetings, Wandering Beekeeper here. Welcome to the Mystical Agriculture. It's uh, Minecraft 1.18.2, as it's said on the title. Mystical Agriculture mod, Mystical Actions. Integrated it with a couple of things. So let's just look at it. the basic premise of Mystical agriculture is to grow resources. Each of these plants is growing a different type of essence. Stone, air essence, earth essence, uh, obsidian, prismarine, these things, redstone seeds. The initial outlay has so a bit of raciness to it. The soil, as you can see here, is red. It's infused with supremium essence. I've tagged the fields with the kind of essence. It's effectively it's the mystical plants to grow. Once you've infused essence into farmland, it does not root. Stay farm. These plants are resistant to being jumped on. Underneath the fields are the accelerators. These are blocks that send ticks directly upward to enhance the growth. So you can see how fast they're growing over there. And that's the harvesting system in action. This is a magical world. It does not have ME technology from plastics. What we have is magic. We have sort of Miyazaki level steampunk. The windmill you see is not just for show. Let's look at how this actually works. So we have these plants growing. We've created necessary enchanted farmland for them. Some work some investment of resources. We have put growth accelerators down on the farm. Growth ticks up. Then we have this Ars Nouveau equipment. We have a timed spell turret. Every 90 seconds, it casts this particular spell. Because it is attached to a chest, the stuff it picks up goes into the chest. And this is where our essence accumulates, and also the seeds that drop. Fertilized essence, which can be making magical fertilizer, which is effectively magic bone meal source plants. I'm not going to muck with that right now. As the plants grow, they produce magical energy. That's the pink zappy bolts. This is an agronomic source link. It's an accumulator. It's gathering the energy being put off by the plants as they grow, storing it in these source jars and in its own internal reservoir, since the source jars are full, and then using that energy, the, time, the timed spell turrets, Use the energy from the source jar when they fire the spell. So this is all self-powered. This is an independent, self-powering harvesting unit here with two harvest guns, harvest cannons, and the growth of the plants provides the energy to keep. Now, what do you do with all this? Okay, we've got fields. Resource plants growing. That took a lot of time and energy and effort. We have auto harvesting equipment all set up, which is also kind of pricey to get set up. So I admit this. But once it's going, it's, it's really amazing what happens. This isn't actually redstone, this is redstone essence. To we can make it into redstone dust, and we're about to. We're going to use it 
our friend the windmill. The house is a bit ridiculous, yes. I was not sure exactly how much space I would need, so I built it with a considerable amount of enclosed space and then ended up uh, with it outside. Fortunately, out here. This is pretty much every resource plant available. Um, some of them are essences that's growing in Furium, which is the introductory essence. You know, just mine or hunt mobs for it. Experimented with a number of different uh, styles of layouts of planting. Given how the harvest cannon works, the 3x3 three three patch is pretty, it's pretty much optimal. There's a, a t t area of effect. So let's see what we're working with this, because once we have this essence... Yeah, here we have a little early experimentation where I'm setting up... A where I set up a water wheel, it turns out I needed quite a number of water wheels in parallel to drive this one machine. The stress of this machine that's on the system caused a single water wheel to bind up. And it really doesn't work right. Not a lot. Now here I haven't really got... I don't have any implication. Let's, let's go look at things are seriously going. I promised to look at the, at the windmill. There's the windmill. Windmill. Moving pretty quick. For every eight squares of sail that is put on, you get one RPM. I have 265 squares of sail which gets me a rotational speed of 33 and a third RPM. This is a reference and an inside joke that people younger than me may or may not get. So there it is, turning at 33 and a third RPM. There are two belts, because belts max out at 20 blocks long, and the tower is 24. So I had to put in a second belt. I wanted to run the belt all the way down inside the tower, but it didn't work out that way. So the first thing I do is put a large cog wheel on, and, the, and a small cog being driven by the large one, and that doubles my rotational speed right there. Then we do it again. We put on a large cog wheel, drive a small cog, and we get intense speed. How intense? Well, this is a mechanical crafter. Yes, it looks like a crafting grid. It is a crafting grid, and it's going to put stuff together for us, driven by rotational energy. We're going to drop all this redstone into here, and just watch it start going. Oh, that's not good. Why is it? Oh, because I forgot to... I know what I did wrong. Hold on a second. My pattern is incorrect. I'll have to wait for it to settle down a second. I am sorry about that. That was entirely my fault. Clean this off. I was making something else a few minutes ago before I started this video, and I completely forgot that I had to put slot cover on the center slot, because this recipe only uses eight essences, not nine. The last recipe I made, well, I was making diamonds. All of these materials were created from essence grown in the fields, just so you know of this. Diamonds are a 3x3. Three three. They're a full 9. Stone's only an 8. Let's prove the concept. Presto. There we go. 
And this is where we get our redstone. No more mining. No more mucking about. I can just pick up some essence that's been auto-harvested in the field, drop it in the chest, and the auto-crafter gets busy. And all this redstone comes rolling in. What makes this work is how the mechanical crafters are put together. At the back, they've all been joined together so that they share a common feed. That hopper Whatever feeds into the hopper feeds into the entire crafter. This is a gearbox here, it, uh, obviously. It allows us to send the rotational energy in various directions. Things belt driven. Pass energy on further down. It is rather loud. This is Industrial Revolution era equipment. The Miyazaki steampunk aesthetic produces very loud, clattery machinery. This is just how it works. So the folks behind the Create mod have been very realistic about it. What is this? This is the brickworks. This is a factory. This takes essences in at one end and puts out bricks at the other. Every single one of these bricks was effectively grown in the fields. So let's go look at how that's done. This is kind of interesting, and there is a particular piece of music that really ought to be queued up about now, but I don't want to run into a copyright strike, so I'm going to grab some dirt essence. Push things a little bit. Five and it's five. I'm gonna have that one extra because there was some things already in the system. Back here to where the water essence is being since all I have to do is collect it out of the harvester at this point. All the work has already been done. It's all self-powering. All I have to do is essences and supplement box. Let's see how this works. So, you see up here, this box it takes water essence. Drop all the water essence into it. Front, Dirt essence goes into here, and it's going to be a little more difficult to see it happening. But there's that already going. Two dirt and two water get pushed together. We have to have a full nine block crafting grid, and I have to put covers over a bunch of the uh, spaces. But it works, and it produces clay ball. Big chunks. The clay is then fed out one ball at a time by an andesite funnel. This is an extracting device. It extracts one item at a time from the chest and drops it onto the conveyor belt. Air belt transports the clay ball to here, where it may feed through into this hopper, which is still loading, which feeds the furnace, which is fed.
all that coal came from right over there, both grown locally. We have brick producing. And theoretically, I could add another step. I could take the brick here. I could pull it out onto a conveyor belt and send it to another mechanical crafter that would take the brick to brick, brick block ready to be actually deployed. I'd rather leave it as uh, raw bricks because if nothing else, you can make pots out of them. And occasionally, you need now we should get some coal. Coal is over here. Let's get some coal. We have also wood essence and nature essence. These can be used for all sorts of interesting things. Um, put together wood essence in the right configuration, and it makes any of six different types of log. So I can make my lumber just by picking up wood essence and dropping it into an auto into a mechanical crafter. I don't have to go chop down trees anymore. I don't have to grow trees and wait for them to grow and chop them down and grow them to chop them down and cycle. No. I have a, an auto harvester, magically powered, powered by the energy of the plants themselves growing. Wait for this. all fed in somewhere in the hoppers. It's a lot of clay ball. And it will all feed automatically and turn into bricks. So I and so from initial plant to finished bricks all automated done in a mechanical factory driven by wind power. Combination of mystical agriculture, a magic system that has a harvest and item pickup ability. Doesn't have to be ours nouveau. I I picked that one because I'm familiar with it and I like it. I like the aesthetic. And then leveraging the mechanical auto crafting of gate. Theoretically, I could build a factory for pretty much anything. Um, I could very easily build a factory, feed in wood essence, split it up between six different mechanical crafter arrays, and has six different kinds of logs feeding out the far end. just a matter of building the equipment. It's a bit rude. As with anything like this, is my, the, putting the system together with the, it's a little expensive at the beginning, it's meant to be. But the resource amplification vastly recompensates for the investment. Once the plants are growing, they just keep going. There's already more. There's already that much more water back here. All these resources go. I have to do. Is deal with living in hell because it is a bit loud. This is the workshop, by the way, and this is the infusion altar 
where you create the seeds for those plants. There is a whole process of gathering the initial materials you have to gather, like you go get obsidian and a couple of other things, and then create the enchanted seeds. But you only have to create one seed for each type of plant. Then you just have to be patient and wait for them to drop more seed. I have so much coal seed here now, and there's more out there in the uh, chest out there. I love these windows. So, you make one seed of each plant type of plant. You start planting them. Plant them, you harvest them, you wait for more seeds to drop, expand your plants. A lot of this is a progr is progressional, and once it starts, every last bit of materials in this barrel was made out back in the factory from the plants you see growing in the fields out front. And if I can make all of this stuff, just the raw materials, there, well, it's just a matter of how much loud machinery you're willing to build and live with. Put a chunk loader around here and you don't even have to deal with that. Yeah, I wasn't sure how much space I would need and it turns out I needed more vertical. Not enough room in here to fit the uh, machinery. But that's life. This whole thing has been an experiment and a proof of concept and I believe the concept has been beyond a shadow of a doubt, Mystic Agriculture is a powerful resource multiplier, and when you put it together with a auto-crafting mod and a mod capable of harvesting, well, the roof is right in front of us. I'm the Wandering Beekeeper. Thank you, and good night.